I'd like to talk about the paratectic phase diagram, and, and this is an example. Uh, paratectic is, you can think of it as the eutectic upside down. So the eutectic, you have liquid turning into alpha plus beta. So you're going through the eutectic temperature at the eutectic composition, and the liquid transforms in to two solids. In the case of the paratectic, we have a uh, two phases, a alpha and a liquid transforming into a single solid, and that is what's happening right here. So I drew these as line compounds because uh, it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, the paratectic is very important particularly in uh, ceramic materials. It is uh, a little bit tricky. And I'll, I'll show you kind of the way to make sure that you, you get it right. Um, but let, let's look at this. So what we have is we've got a, a line compound and we're, used, we're talking about uh, you know, temperature on the y-axis, uh, B, or your composition on, on the x, and we have you know, composition A, B, and then I, I made a uh, a stoichiometric compound between them. So this is A2B, and then I drew in the components in the phase diagram. And again, you're you're looking at this and you say to yourself, well, okay, I got A, I've got liquid, therefore I have to have a two-phase region. And this is something that many phase diagrams that you're going to find in, in textbooks and particularly in, in literature, they don't have the uh, names filled in. They just give you the lines and they might write the, uh, the temperatures or the compositions, but they, they don't leave the naming and that's something you have to fill in. So that's what I filled it in here for you and you should probably practice that on your own, but I've got a liquid two-phase region. I've got B liquid two-phase region. I've got uh, A to B A two-phase region. I've got A to B B two-phase region. Here I've got A to B liquid two-phase region and I've got B liquid two-phase region. So everywhere that there should be a uh, two-phase region separating single-phase regions, we have those. Uh, so you know whenever you're, you're filling these out, the easiest way to do it is to start on you know, one side and, and work your way across. If you get stuck, go back to the other side and, and work your way across. And typically, uh, that way you'll wind up with a, a meeting in the middle. Uh, in this diagram, we've got a paratectic, which is happening there, and we have a eutectic, which is happening here. So again, that eutectic liquid turns into two solids, and paratectic, a A plus L, right at that composition and at that temperature, Transforms into transforms into a single phase, so that's what the paratectic is. Now, reading this is exactly the same as reading any binary phase diagram, right? Your liquid, you cool down. Let's let's do an example here. Your liquid, you cool down, go into a two-phase region. You say, okay, I'll draw my horizontal line, I got my tie line, I can read the composition of my solid, which is pure A, I can read the composition of my liquid, which I read down here, I can then use the inverse lever rule to figure out the phase fraction, right? Simple. Keep going down. In this region, I've got, you know, A, A to B, I can use the inverse lever rule 
this is all exactly as we've seen before. The thing that is, and over on this side, I should point out, you have the same thing as well, right? You say you're here, cool down, A2B plus liquid, and here, A2B plus B, right? No surprise. The thing that's surprising, and what makes the paratectic actually kind of, at least from my perspective, kind of interesting, is that between these two points, if you have a composition which sits anywhere in here, as you cool down liquid, you form alpha plus liquid. Okay? You keep cooling down right before you cross the paratectic temperature, you can do your inverse lever rule. You figure out, it looks like in this case it's going to be you know, maybe 10% uh, solid. Right? So right here, and all the rest is liquid. Now, what happens when you drop below the paratectic temperature? Well, now, you're in a two-phase region, which is A2B plus liquid. And A2B, if I draw my horizontal tie line, it looks like it's maybe uh, two-thirds A2B. A to B, A to B. So, in the process of changing temperature by, you know, one degree, all of the A phase gets reabsorbed into liquid, and a whole separate phase precipitates out. And that's what makes this kind of interesting because you have all of this motion happening and as we go on and we talk about kinetics some the kinetics of this uh, is pretty complicated and it gives us a lot of ways that we can control the microstructure but you have this reabsorption event so the way that you make sure you don't mess this up is simply through looking at the bottom of the phase diagram. And what I mean is that we know that we have these compositional regions here, and we have a compositional region here. Any system that sits between A and A to B up here when it cools down, it has to be made of the A and the A2B phase. Any system that has a composition between A2B and B, when it cools down, it has to form A2B plus B. And the fact that we have this little weirdo region that starts out with A plus L that has to be transient, and as we cool down, it has to go away. So the way to make certain that you are properly identifying the phases, and that you properly identify the phases that actually form in your microstructure, is to not only look at where you are in the phase diagram, but to always keep in mind the compositional ranges that your system is sitting in and that will tell you where you have to end as you cool down and, and approach uh, low temperature.